bootstrap on a poor interface versus right just put the command interface 0 slash 0 ip ceph or no ip ceph but ceph must be enabled if your ceph is not enabled what happens your lsp will be break and what is lsp label switch path a collection of lsr or or it's a unidirection right also we have seen uh, like a aggregation right right also i have seen the label space lsr id is a uh, you know the 6 byte where the two uh, four byte is going to represent that x dot x dot x right number and then the zero is going to represent the label space right platform label space that we have uh, done uh, in uh, so we done with the, this ampulation ecas part right okay so another application of the ampulation right application of the ampulation the MPLS VPN. Question again comes in the picture, right? What is VPN? What is VPN? It is a private to private network channel or a public network. Exactly, right? We are going to make a one, uh, we are going to make a private connectivity or the public network, right? So MPLS allow you to make a one VPN connection between the two sites, right? For example, if you have two sites, site one, right? That's a Delhi location. And we have a site number two, that's a Calcutta location, right? Okay, so we can we can give the MPLS connectivity to this site, right? By using the MPLS VPN. So this is the ISP over there, and this ISP is going to provide the MPLS to this customer. So in that case, what happened, whatever the route they have, they can only extend this route to the this particular person. And whatever they have this route, they can only extend this route to the this person. So in that case, what happened, whatever the different customer we have, what are the different customers, they don't have any knowledge about this routes. So we can achieve this thing by using the MPLS VP, right? But to implement the MPLS VPN, right? To implement VPN, you must need to have a knowledge of the IGP protocol. You must need to have a knowledge of the BGP protocol. You must need to have a knowledge of the redistribution. These are the prerequisites, right? And you must need to have a knowledge of the MPLS Unicast. You must need to knowledge of the BRF. This part you must need to know. And already we have done with the each and everything, right? We have done with the IGP, BGP, redistribution, MPLS Unicast, and BRF as well. As. So MPLS VPN is what? It's a co combination of all these things, right? And one more thing, MPVGP. Right? We didn't look at that part, right? Um, uh, we'll go into this today. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So if you see, let me open my GN screen. MPLS VPN. So I'm just going to remove HMT right now. I'll show you the basic. Okay, what is this? One minute. Okay, so let me use this guy, this guy, this guy right now. Not interested. Not even this guy, not even this guy. And 
I'm not interested in this network right now. Done. So guys, have a look at this topology. Okay. Okay, perfect. Make me know. The article is the article is an article and uh, Nokia branch Cisco Cisco Nokia 2524 3.01 all good and profit right so let's do one thing let me take a screenshot okay and let's paste in the notepad in fact Done. Okay. We are going to run the EHR to the cloud. Right. So we are running the EHRP number one. Same way, this side, this customer. So we have a, I'll tell you what is the topology right now. So this is, this is the ISP network we have. So this is a complete ISP, right? Service provider. And in the service provider, what happened? We have a two customer, customer number one, that's a Cisco India. At the same time, we have a Cisco UK. We have a Nokia India and we have a Nokia UK, right? So they have some customer out. So have a look over there. These are the customer out we have. So Cisco India have some customer out and uh, Cisco UK also have some customer out. At the same time, Nokia India has some customer out and Nokia UK has some customer out. If you see one thing, the duplication is there, right? We'll discuss this part later on. And if you have an idea of the good VRF, then hope you have an idea also why I'm going to use the, or like, you know, the duplication. Because according to the RFC, you know, 1980, the private address, right, is not routable. Or we can, the private address can be duplicated, right? Not routable, can be duplicated. Right? Because the private is used by the some companies as well as right, so it can be duplicate. So we have a Cisco India, Cisco or Nokia India, and Cisco UK and or Nokia UK. I need to provide the connectivity, right? I need to provide the connectivity between this guy to this guy. I'm assuming you have a knowledge of the VRF, BGP, redistribution and HMD. I'm not going to explain what is VRF right now, okay? Otherwise, it will take the three hours for the VRF only, right? So you have a VRF and what VRF is going to do? It create a virtual routing table or it will create a separate infrastructure for each customer, right? So VRF is creating a separate infrastructure for each customer. Without involving any ISP router. Extra ISP. That's the use of VRM, right? That should now. be without, right? Or with, without. Okay. okay, now, have a look. What I want, I need to provide the communications, right? I need to provide the communications between this person to this person. Same way, I need to provide the communication between this person to this person, right? So what happened? First of all, this guy has to exchange the own information, right? Try to understand. If R1 will send this information to the R5, right? 1.0.0.0.0.0, right? And R2 will send this information to the R5, 2.0.0.0.0, right? 
So this is the this route is belong to the India Nokia, and this route is belong to whom? Cisco, right? What R5 will do? Basically, what happened? R5 will receive this route into the global routing table, right? So what happened? This information will be mixed, right? This information will be because the this route will be uh, comes in the global routing table, and we'll say this in one the R6, R7, R8, and R9, right? And what R9 will do? It will share this information, both information to this guy and this guy as well as. So this 2.0 information can say to the Cisco as well as, and this 1.0 information can say to the Nokia as well as, right? So to avoid this problem, what we can do over there? I'm going to put the VRF on this side, right? This interface, I'm going to put this VRF as a Cisco, and this interface, I'm going to put the VRF as a Nokia, so that we have a separate, separate routing table. So that we have a separate, separate routing table. So same thing, I'm going to create a one VRF for this guy. Let me write on the steps. <clears throat> Step four, MPLS VPN configuration. Guys, just pay attention. It's a huge configuration. So please focus on this. Step number one, configure. IP addresses, the false step, step number two. Just no time. So for example, this guy is going to run with the, take example, I'm just going to assume that this person is going to run with the OSPIP one, same way this guy is going to run with the OSPF number two, or maybe one, right? This guy is going to run with the RIP, right? And this guy is going to run with the EGRP 100, right? Different customer, different, different routing <coughs> protocol is going to enable, right? Now, what is the step number one we have? Configure the IP address. So if you see right now, Uh, hello, one question. So here, our underlay is our IGP protocols and overlay is the MPLS VPN, right? No, there's no concept of the underlay and overlay right now. I'll, this, you can't say like this. Oh, I'm can. not creating a logical tunnel over there. Okay. I'm not creating a logical tunnel. Like in a GRE, we are creating a logical tunnel. Here, I'm not creating a logical tunnel. Okay, I'm coming so to your question, right? Well, let's do, just wait for some time. Let's go through this step by step. And if you have a question, you can ask me. Okay, let me go through the basic. Have a look at the basic IP configuration on daughter number one. That this guy, right? Show IP interface brief. All good. I'm just doing the step number one right now. Configure the IP this right? Daughter number two. This guy. Done. I'm again repeating if you have a good knowledge of the all this IGP protocol, BGP, VRF, MPLS Unicast, this MPLS is nothing. It's very easy. <clears throat> Order with R3. This guy, right? So R3 has two interfaces, one at all. Okay. <clears throat> All done. So we have a now do the WRC this configuration to show IP interface brief. All done. Now we have to go on a router number four. That is this guy. 
right? It should be 90.4 and two loopbacks. Everything is true. R5. <clears throat> what are the next thing oh, we need to verify the r5 ip addressing right do show ip interface brief i do have a 56.5 on one slash zero right and i have one loop back 5.5.5.5 right this guy I'll do one thing. Let's create the configure this interface, right? Zero slash zero. Interface zero slash zero. IP address will be what? Five. No shut down. And interface zero slash one. No shut down. And do dollar. Save this configuration. All good. So now if you can verify the same thing. Questions? No. Perfect, right? R6. Show IP interface brief extrude on a send. Any questions on R6? 56 or 6, 76.6, and we have a look back. All done. R7. R8. All good. And we have a R9. So R9, same way, we have eighty nine dot nine on 0 slash 0 interface, that is this guy. We need to configure this interface, right? Two interfaces. Interface 0 slash 1 IP address will be 93.9. OK, what happened? No, so interface 1 slash 2 IP address will be 94.9. All good, right? No sit down to roll or save this configuration. Perfect, right? Step foot. Configure the IGB protocol according to the customer. What I am assuming. This customer is running with the OS stuff, right? And this customer is running with the this customer is running with the OS stuff, and this customer is running with the EHRP. So I'll do one thing. I'll put the step over there, router number one. What happened? I said that router OS step number one, network area zero, right? Network network area zero. Done on R1. Okay. On R2, done, done, done. Any questions on R2 is done. So I'll do one thing. I'll space this configuration according to the router. So router one has this configuration, copy and Then customer done Artu
done auto has done next customer is what r3 r3 cust configuration will be what same way also is running i'm just copy the also from here i just need to change this network 19.0 this guy will be 3.0.0 and this guy will be 170.16.0.24 right any questions r3 done Guys, always check the pre configuration okay, in examination. Always. Now we have a R4. Henry, right? Network 94.0. Network. Network. Copy. R4. Or either I can configure the VRF on ISP set. Which one I have to follow first? One? VRF or IGP? VRF. Exactly, I have to clear the VRF first of all, right? Because if I'm going to configure the IGP or the first of all, what happened? I need to advertise this thing into the IGP without VRF. So what happened? Again, I have to modify my configuration. So let's configure the VRF first of all. And why I'm creating the VRF so that they have a separate separate routing table, right? We have created a separate infrastructure for each customer without involving any extra ISP router. So I'm just creating a VRF on this guy so that this R5 will differentiate, right? I'm just creating a VRF on R5. Right? VRF on R5 and R9 so that they can differentiate The customer done. So go to R5, R3, R5 dot first of all. What I'm going to do? R5. Step number three. Read. We are at on R5 and R9. We can say that on all. Provider as a router. A router that has a connectivity with the customer. A router that has a customer connectivity with the customer. P router. A router that has a connectivity with the customer. So now on R3, I need to the IP VRF. VRF name is case sensitive, right? VRF name is case sensitive. IP VRF Cisco, and then I need to go say that IP VRF Nokia. Two VRFs are activated on R3 and R5. Now, I'll do one thing R3. And then interface 0 slash 0 IP VRF forwarding Cisco. IP address will be done. Same way. Interface 0 slash 1 IP VRF. IP address will be done. Exit. It should be R5, right? Once. 
sorry done copy and also any questions is clear same way we have to do on this side hello uh, no, right. no one question so we already enabled the ip interface on with that ip address right so when we enable the vrf it is just we are going to over write the existing ip address basically now let's configure it of course we are changing the routing table right that's why on r9 two vrfs copy Cisco, Cisco, zero slash, zero slash one, Cisco, and it should be IP address ninety three dot nine, and zero slash one slash zero. This should be ninety four dot nine. Then copy and paste. I know that IP uh, where for Cisco for Cisco. Just taking that command. It's forwarding. IP where for Cisco. Forwarding. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. My bad. Done. Once we have done with the VR part, now let's go for the step number configure IGP protocol. So right now, according to the diagram, right, which protocol I have been enabled on this side? On the VRF OSPF one, this side predict one, right? R five, right? Router OSPF number one, VRF Cisco, right? That's it. Network area zero. Same way. Router rip address from version two address family IP before VRF which Nokia network twenty five zero then same way R five have to configure router EGRP number one that is fifty six dot zero that this guy. Okay, and parallel zero. So right now I'm just going to paste this configuration. Okay, R five, and wait for some time. It will form the inhibition, right? All done. Now for this uh, for this configuration, right? EJRP number one for this which route the ISP inside route this interface after run the IGP protocol right so that they can form the neighborship and LDP will be exchanged over there because LDP is enabled on this side right and PLS will be enabled in the service provider network because this guy is also enabled with the MPLS right so what happened if you see on I think I have a One minute. It's configured, right? Okay. I have all this one.
So R5, this configuration is for, sorry. On R5, this configuration is already present. Inside the network. So I don't need to configure it. It's a pretty configurable. Now, one minute. Hello. Yeah. Sub to wireless model, everything should be wireless. Done, right? So now the same configuration, if you just have a look on R6, you will have something like this. On R6 router, you will have router EHR number one network. That should be all interfaces, right? Same way router number seven. Same way we have router number eight. Right. On R9, HRP number one, network, network, 902. This interface and look back. So if you now verify the each configuration on the router node 6 as well as from 6, show run section EHGRP. All done. R7. All done. R8. All done. R9. All done. Any questions? No. Once we have done this part, I need to configure the R9 router OSPF number one VRF Cisco because this guy is running with the VRF, right? Right, OSPF Cisco, and then as a network, it is zero, right? Same way, we have to configure a router, RIP, version 2, address family, IPv4, not address, EHRP. EHRP 100, address family, IPv4, VRF, which one? Nokia, right? And I said the network, 94.0, network, that's it. Right, R9, OSPIP and EHRP. According to the VRF, right? Copy. All done. Perfect. 
right? So once we they have done with the neighborship, so if you see the first thing you need to verify that R1 will advertise this information to the R5 and R5 should have this information into the Cisco routing table, right? So if you go back to the R5 and uh, have a look, do so IP root, sorry, do so IP root VR, what? I have this information, same thing. I have this information, Nokia on R5. So R2 will also share this information to R5. So can you see the duplication? Same doubt, but they have in the different, different routing table. This is the beauty of VRM. Okay, this is the beauty of VRF. So we can have a RFC 1989 private address can be duplicated. But right now, R5 is what, what R5 is doing. If R5 maintain this route in the global routing table, what happened? They will pick the OSM because OSM has a low ID. But right now, both information for them are routing table just because of the different different routing table information we have. Just because of the VRF. Same like a MAC table. VLAN I each VLAN has a separate MAC address table. Same way, if you just need to go and verify on the, this router R9. R9 also have all information. Do show IP root. One minute, do show IP VRF interface. Do show IP root VRF. So I have all this information in my routing table. R3 is setting the own influence of the R9. And if you should do show IP root, we are at Nokia. I don't have information. So what I'm going to do, I'll just check the first of all on R5. Does R5 plus the GRP is there, right? So what happened on this guy now? Ninety four or four. Let's ping it. Spinning is perfect, right? Do you show IP H IP neighbor. So I have an issue with the R nine nine. Go back on R nine and check the all configuration. Do you show IP interface buddy. R9, once last zero, it's good, right? This interface, what the next thing we need to verify over there? Do show IP VRF, do VRF, Nokia. Thing is working fine. Then let's check the EHRP now. EHRP is also full, right? Or maybe but do do show the section router my user Sorry. Once can you do show the section router on I R four sir? That basic thing is also identifying the autonomous system. Basic VRF concept. 
So you have to define. Uh, you have to define that. Yeah, define it. Yeah, of course. This command is just going to enable the EAGRP, right? For the global. Acha. Okay. All good. So now if you check on R9, do so IP root VR. I have all information on routing table. Clear? What is the next thing that we have to do? Once we have done with this part, the next part is The next part, step number five. Configure MPLS unicast inside service card. Right? Normal MPLS. So how many interfaces we have to enable and the MPLS one slash zero? All these two interfaces, all these two interfaces, all these two interfaces, and this interfaces. So R5, interface one slash MPLS IP, R6, MPLS IP, right, R7, R8, right, and R9. And if you see, by default, MPLS is also enabled on this guy. I haven't tried the last time I did the practical last batches. So, save that as well. Do so on section MPLS. Any questions from this command line? Tell me. Nampilis mana? Anything that you don't know, do so. Nampilis interface. So I am going to advertise the label from this range. Label protocol LDP by default is so this is the optional command. This is also an optional command. If you want to include it, you can include it. Otherwise, it's optional. The interface is enabled with LDP. Right? On our R6 now. Clear? R7. Done. On R8. Done. On R9. Any questions? Okay. So if you just verify on an R6 starter, on an R6 we have a two neighborship, right? So M plus LDP neighbor. One we have a seven or seven or seven, and one one we have a. Okay. Same thing if you go to verify on an R8, R8 will have two neighborship. So M plus LDP neighbor. One is a R7 and one is a. Army. Is that clear? What is the next thing we have to do now? Once we have done with the MPLS, unicasting, right? My ISP is also working fine with the MPLS now. My ISP is also configured with the like, you know, the EIGRP protocol. So we have a utility. What is the next thing now? The next thing is that. This R6 order, 
R7 auto and R8 auto. This is the core and PLS auto. Right? These are the core and PLS router. This router, no need to maintain. Customer router. This router, no need to maintain the customer router. Because this is a core router, right? I, I need to configure this as a BGP three four the core router is not going to run with the any customer route. I'm going to configure the BGP over there. So how we can do that if you remember in the BGP we have ability right in a BGP we have a ability to form the indirect negotiation. I can form the new ship from here to here. So in that case, what happened if I have a one neighbor ship between this guy to this guy, right? So what happened? Whatever the route is coming to me, right? Whatever the route is coming to me, whatever the route is coming to me, whatever route from R9 to R5 and R5 to now still remember i think my actually i'm keen to the different phone that's why so make sure the internet now it's good now thanks one minute, guys. We want to now try to understand the customer is going to share the own information to the R9. Customer is going to share the own R9. Provider Azure router, we can see that. These are my PE router, right? These are my PE router. Customer is going to say the own information of the P. Customer is going to say the own information of the P. What happened? The P is going to exchange the own information directly to the this guy. And P is going to say this customer information directly to the this guy. And now after that, what happened? R5 will say this information of this customer. And R5 will say this information of this customer according to the customer route. So in this case, do I need to maintain? Do this, the, does this router maintain the customer route? No. So in that case, what happened? This customer, this core router, this core router is going to forward the packet based on what? Label lookup. If you remember that in MPLS unicast, what happened? The whatever the routers in the MPLS unicast, they all maintain the customer uh, like a customer house at the same time. Label, uh, they are also maintaining the label lookup. So if somehow label is not present, what happened? The router is forwarding the packet based on the safe table. But in this case, what happened? If the label is not present, your network will be. The benefit is single, sim oh, only one benefit I'm getting over there. In this case, one well, the core router does not need to maintain the customer route. So if this customer has a 10,000 information, if this customer has a 20,000 information, this route no need to maintain by the uh, core router. So I can save the money, right? I don't. Only the higher end of series of router is going to put on the PE on this guy. Because this guy is going to maintain the complete information. This guy does not. So I can use the small series of router as well as in this case, because this guy does not need to maintain the customer out. 
right? I can make a BGP free core. I am not going to run the BGP on the core network, right now. So what we have lawyer voice again. I have to configure the I. Sorry. Voice goes mute in the middle, sir. It's good almost right. So just see, let's see if anything is happening right uh, in the next five minutes. And close it. Okay, let's see. So what happened, guys? I need to configure the IBG between the R5 this loop back, right, to this loop back. Still, uh, is a uh, voice breaking is so much. Right? Yes. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, voice is so much breaking. Yeah, it's 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 okay for some time, and then all of a sudden you get cut off, and then basically we can hear you back. Uh, that's how it is. So I mean, like in the middle when you are talking, you're not able to hear at all. Uh, so I'm not sure. And then we again got you. So. One, 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 one. I'll just come back. Um, that, that, uh, that mate is walking back. Okay. I like
hey guys uh so we have done with like you know the this concept right all the igp like a step number five configure the amplitude in cast in the service provider now we need to configure the bgp right between this guy to this guy so we can make a bgp free code right okay so in this case what happened whatever the customer route they have this guy has a customer or this guy has a customer route, this guy has a customer route, and this guy has a customer route. Right? They can say to the R5. This guy also said to the R5. R5 can, can say this information directly to the R9. Same be what happened. It's not coming. What happened? Switch on the TV. Switch on. Which cable is this one? Oh, maybe one and one. This is the wrong one. Right? This is the wrong Right. Okay. So, so R five will say this own information to the R nine, and R nine will share the own information to the R five. Right. Okay, so all the customer routes. So in that case, what happened? I can directly exchange my route through the BGP, not through the EHRP routing group. Listen, I'm exchanging my route BGP, not through the EHRP. So this core router, no need to maintain the customer route information. They always follow the packet based on what? Label. They always forward the packet based on the what? Label. See, in the MPLS recast, what happened? The core router has information about like what? Routing table as well as and label as well as. So if there somehow label is not present, they will follow the packet based on the SAP table. But in case if R7 does not have a label, they will drop the packet. So benefit is very simple. In that case, what happened? R6, R7, R8, no need to maintain the customer route. We can if we can implement this router as a very lower stage, lower end stage of router. No need to put the higher stage of the end of the router over there. Only need to require the higher end stage of the router on R5 on R9. Cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to configure the BGP between this guy R5 to R9 between this loop back 5.5.5.5 to 9.9.9. And this uh, neighborship I'm going to form as IVGP, right? Because same is number we have right now. So let's start the configuration. What I can do, just go to router of 5. And uh, step number six. Configure IBGP between R5 to R9. Right? On R5 router BGP number one. What I have answered, the neighborship 9.9. .9, let's configure them through the CLI, right? I'll just copy this configuration. Right R5. And as the router BGP number one. BGP router ID can define the 5.5.5.5.5.5. Right? Then. Neighborship, I'm going to form with the 9.9.9.9.9.9.9, right? Remote H will be what? One, neighborship 9.9.9.9.9. Update source loop back number one. Done? Now, try to understand one thing over there. Whatever the route, that is coming in this side and whatever the route that is coming in this side right this is normally what route is there ipv4 right this is the ipv4 route and what is the size of this route 32 bits right what happened once this route comes to the r5 right listen to me once this route comes to the r5 and r2 will send the own information to the r5 as last right they will maintain this information right now. What happened on R5? We have a two routing table. One we have a Cisco, and one we have a Nokia. 
and one we have a global, right? With the global routing table as well as. Now, in the Cisco routing table, what happened? We have information about what? 1.0.0.0.0.0.0. And same thing, we have a 2.0.0.0.0. At the same time, they have information about 10.0.0.0.0.0. Right? And this guy also have a 10.0.0.0.0. So till this point, we have a differentiate, right? We can differentiate by we have a different different routing table on the VRF side. But when I'm going to exchange this route, or we can say when I'm going to redistribute this route into the BGP, of course, I need to redistribute, right? Because this route is coming from OSPF and this route is coming from RIP. I need to redistribute this route into the BGP, right? So when I'm going to redistribute this route, I want to share this information through this line, right? Through this tunnel, right? So what happened? We have something like this. 2.0.0.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.0. Question is that till this point we have differentiated the 10.0.0 according to the Cisco routing table and according to the Nokia routing table 10.0.0 because according to the RFC 1980 what happened? This route is what private address, right? It can be duplicate, but what about on this line? How we can differentiate this route? how we can differentiate this route. So what happened, if you remember 80.1Q protocol, the VLAN, right? In VLAN, what happened if the packet is coming from source MAC A and distance MAC B, what this protocol is doing over there? It adding a tag over there, right? VLAN number 10, if you have VLAN number 20, they will add VLAN number 20. If you have VLAN number 30, they will add the VLAN number 30. So what happened, the remote side, they can identify based on this tag value. Okay, this packet is for the VLAN number 10 or 20 or 30. Same thing, what happened? I need to perform the tagging of this route. I need to tag this route, right? So that this guy will identify, okay, this route is belong to the home, Cisco, and this route is belong to home, Nokia. And that tagging is done in the VRF is known by the route distinguisher. Route distinguisher. What RT is going to do? RT is did to behave like a 80.1Q. It's also going to make a, a unique this packet. And same thing, RT is also going to make the unique the route. It's just going to provide the uniqueness to the route. It's just going to provide the uniqueness to the route. So basically, what happened? What is the size of this packet? 32 bit. Once I'm going to add the RD, for example, this is a 1.0.0.0.0.0. This is a 32 bit route, right? Once I'm going to add the RD value on this particular route, this is the integer value. You can take any number, right, from the 16 bit, not 16 bit, sorry. Six. One minute. One minute. Over the value of this guy. Size of 64 bit, but the value range is, I think so. RD. Yeah. Okay. The size of RD is what? Now I will explain over there. So this is the one down that is coming 1.0.0.0. Right. What I'm going to do, this is the 32 bit now. To make this sir, audio. No, 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 I just uh, like a checking this information, right? What is the RT range? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So one or two, this is the 32 bit route. To make this route unique, what happened? I'm going to use the RD value. RD stands for route distance, right? The RD size is what? It's a 64 bit. The size of RT is a 64 bit. So once I'm going to add this value 1.0.0.0.0, I'm going to add a RD number of this guy. I said 1 colon 1. You can take right now, right now, you can take any number. It's totally up to you. 
right now for just for the learning purpose you can take any number but there is a condition is there right now i'm taking any number for the learning purpose i'm just using for this customer for router number 1 the rd value will be 1 colon 1 this guy is going to depend on 32 bit and this guy is going to depend on 32 bit this is known as a asn the format is asn number asn means what customer as number right and number means what local router number for example if this guy is going to use the bgp number 1 right as number and this guy is using the bgp as number 2 and if i am going to use the bgp as number 100 so for this customer what as number i am going to use customer as number so the what, the rd value for this person uh, for this person will be 1 colon 100 for this person what happened 2 colon 100 so 32 bit this guy 32 bit this guy total 64 bit so what happened after applying the rd after applying the rd this route will become the 96 bit that is known as vpn v4 and through the bgp we need to change VPN V4, you know, not the normal IP. So if I'm going to exchange the VPN V4 dot, if if you want to exchange the VPN V4 dot, which neighborhood you have to form? IPv4 or VPN before? VPN before, right? So in that case, what happened? In BGP case, I'm going to form the VPN before innovation, not the IP before. Because this customer or this whatever the route is coming to me, right? Whatever the route is coming, this route is coming actually hard. 1.0.0.0.0.0, right? 32 bit and what happened on this particular RF5 on the VRF Cisco? What is RD value I have defined? One colon one. The Asian number, right? 60 uh 32 bit this guy, 32 bit this guy, total 64 bit. So one or zero 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 plus a 32 bit plus Asian number, right? That one colon one. 64 bit total will be 96 bit route. This 96 bit route is known as a VPN V4 route. I need to exchange this VPN people out through the BGP. So we need to form the VPN people neighborship, not the IP people neighborship. So in that case, what happened? We need to go on the router now five and tell this person, hey, address family, VPN people. And it's a neighbor 9.9.9.9.9. Activate this guy into the VPN people, not in the IP people. And say that neighbor 9.9.9.9.9. And next up shall will be myself. Same thing, we need to go on the router number nine. Say router BGP number one, BGP router ID will be what? Neighborship. Remote age will be what? One. Neighborship. Updates will be back one. Address family, VPN V4. I'm going to form the neighborship with which person? Activate VPN V4, not the IP V4. And I've said neighbor five of five of five of five of five next up. Whenever the route is coming, when I'm going to advertise the route, I need to put my next up. Can you explain why we put the next up? This command, this route is coming from the customer, right? I need to advertise this route to the R5. So in that case, one of the next ones are 93.3. I need to change the next one. Otherwise, you need to provide the utility. Simple logic. To do the one thing. If the next stop is unreachable, right? 
how can I put that out as a mark and valid best of? But our loopback is reachable through IGP. If the IGP is not figured out there, then we need to configure the BGP, right? Now in this case, so I have IGP, right? If I'm not going to add this link in the BGP case, what happened? I need to configure the next of self. Yeah, in case of BGP. And in our examinations, I'm just showing you right now the different different routing variables, but in examination, you always have a BGP. Always. I'll show you that perspective as well as the BGP have multiple flavors, right? Uh, in that case, right? Uh, like depend on the output in a CCI exam or whatever, depend on the output, you have to use the next top self, depend on the output, you have to use the redistribute connected and depend on the output, you need to uh, like uh, advertise the conditional advertisement you have to do in the redistribute self. Not everyone, only for the first, uh, only for the data link. You can also use the network statement, right? For that one, but that will create a origin port will be high. But in some time, what happened in the CCI lab exam, they will ask, hey, I don't want a high origin code. I want to incomplete. We have to do the registration. And if they don't want the origin, uh, like, uh, you know, the if they if they will not say you that I don't want to maintain this information in that case, you need to use the next option. So I'll show you that thing. Don't worry about that. So now if you see, I have a neighborship. And this neighborship is what? It's not an IPv4 neighborship. It's a VPN report neighborship. One question, so, so Devinder said that uh, through IGP they are reachable. They are not reachable, right? Through IGP as well at this point in time. It's reachable, right? Three, I, have no. this, I have advertised this link. Uh, no, I mean like even before you did this next top self, were they reachable? Yeah, of course. This is the OSPF is enabled, right? OSPF is enabled here, but I, I have advertised this route now. Correct, correct. Uh, but what I'm asking is, so basically th that was on OSPF. They have this VRF enabled here, right? Okay, so they both are so on the same VRF. Same here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So guys, uh, we have done with the VPN repo membership, right? Always make sure that, see, one thing is very important. What person is doing the mistake in examinations? They are forming the IPv4 as well as, and they are forming the VPN repo as well as. If you have a requirement from the IPv4, if you don't have a requirement, don't form the IPv4. Because all these are the 96 way drop. I'll show you this 96 will be written like this, right? All these are the 96 without, it's not IPv4. So no need to requirement of the IPv4 issue. Always requirement of the VPN report. Don't put any extra configuration. If you want to form the IPv4 as well as, you need to go on the router and go on the address family, like IPv4, and say the neighbor and put the activate keyword. Then you put the IPv4 innovation. You didn't configure the route distinguisher yet, right? No, I didn't configure it. Yet. Okay, okay. This point is clear. Now, what is the next thing we have to do? Okay, I'll just copy this configuration. I will explain this command set community extended. Don't worry about that. Okay. But by default, in the newer iOS version, this command is enabled. What is the use of this command? We'll discuss later on. But by default, this command is enabled in the newer iOS version. In the older iOS version, we have to manually give this command. I did I put the activity here. Um, done. Once I have done with this part, which is step number six, seven number step. Step number seven. Configure article. Make the route. RD always configured in the ASN format. Ace miss. Custom base mode. And then miss. What is it? Local order.
Okay. Okay. Uh, one uh, just make a sticky notes. Okay, you have to just remind me this part. Okay. I just want to show you something about this part. Just remind me in the, at the last of the class. All done. So this is the sixty-four bit number. So what I'm going to do, I just need to go on the router now. Four, sorry, five. This guy. For this customer, right now I'm just going to use the RD one hundred one. Okay. IP VRF Cisco. I said the RD will be one hundred. When when I'm going to use the BGP, right? I'll show you how to configure this Asian configuration, right? But right now I'm going to use the just make it easy one hundred one. Same thing, IP VRF Nokia. RD will be two hundred. Sorry. Right, same way. I need to go on the router number nine, and this should be a uh, RD three colon three. And IP we are okay. This one we RD all good, right? Do show history. R nine, R five. All done. What is the next thing now? Once we are done with the R D, right? Once we have done with the RD, we need to right now. Still till this point, what happened? If you just have a look, show IP BGP summary on a R5 router. If you check on R5, show IP BGP summary. Sorry, show IP BGP VPN before all. Something. I don't have any information about BGP table. Right? Even if it's show IP BGP VPN before all, do we have any doubts? No. I don't have any information. Reason is very simple, because till this point, if you see show IP root VR Cisco, we have this information in the Cisco routing table. Show IP root VR Nokia. We have this route in the Nokia routing table. So right now, what happened? Try to understand this part. It's a little bit logical. We have a Cisco routing table, right? We have a Nokia routing table. In the Cisco routing table, we have information about 10.0.0.0.0. Same way, we have a 2.0.0.0.0, and we have 10.0.0.0.0. We have done with the RD. So this guy is a one colon one. So this is now 96 bit or, and this is in two colon two. This is now 96 bit or, right? At the same time, what happened? We have a BGP table as well as VPN VPN table. And between this guy, which route I am going to exchange? VPN VPN. So this route is belong to the which protocol? OSPF. This route is belong to the which protocol? RIP. I need to put this information in the which table? BGP table. So what we have to do? Redistribution. We need to do the redistribution, right? So we need to go on the router number five. And say router BGP one. Address only. We are up. Which we are, Cisco. Can we put here? Cisco. British word. 
which rock? What's the one? No, you have the matrix, right? And simply address for me, IP before we are up. Nokia, right? Wait a short. Wait. Same way. Daughter, what it wasn't true. Address on the IP road, we are up. Nokia, wait a short. BGP, right? One matrix rule. Same way, daughter also from one. We are up. So, so. Wait a short. BGP number one. Submit. Maybe the classless route has there. Just put the submit. If you don't put the submit, no issue because right now all we have glass pool. Then step number Then step number nine, sorry, on R9 set. Lot of VGP number one. Address on IP we are up. Just go right. Wait to show which lock. Go start number one, right? That's it, right? Uh, address on me, IP we are up. Look here, we just switch it off. 100, right? Same thing. Router OS, we are up. So, so. We just switch it off. Mm -hmm. hmm? VGP1, right? If you don't put the uh, submits, it will prompt you the warning message. It's not an error message, it's a warning message. It's not an error message, so warning message. So only class for network will be redistributed. No issue. I have only class for right now. Okay, same way router EHRP number 100. Right, address on the IPv4 VRF. Okay. Yeah. IPv4 VRF. Which one? No VRF. And as a redistribute, which guy? BGB number. Patrick. Then, you show history. And then, BGB one, dot BGB one, and then. Once we have done with the redistribution, right? Now they can exchange the route in the VPN repo table. Okay. After that one. After that one. After that. How many VR table we have right now on the R9 on R5? On R9, we also have a Cisco. And R9, we also have a Nokia, right? Same way they have a VPN network. Okay. What I'm going to tell this person, hey, you have to, right? You have to inject the VPN repo dot into the Cisco routing table. Right. From I have to I have to export this route from here. From here, I need to export this route into the Cisco routing table. Right. I need to exp then again what happened? I need to export this out from this side as well. As. Same way, what happened? If I'm doing the exporting over there, I need to do the 
importing as well as that. Try to understand what happened. I have this information in the BGB BPN table, right? Previously, it was not there. If you just go back to the R5, I did the same configuration on R5, right? If you just go back to the R5, if you see, previously, I put the command show IP, BGP, BPN before all. There's no information was there, right? Now, if you see, we have information according to the customer to customer. Can you see that? So this information R1 is having this guy. All the Cisco route we have, right? Same way. All we have a rip route, the VRF Nokia. So we have this information in the R5 VPN report table, right? Same way, if you check on our R9, we have this information from this side. So R3 is advertising the only information today, and R4 is advertising only. So basically, we can see like this right now in my VPN report table. We have this side complete information. We have this side complete information. In my VPN report table, we have this side complete information and we have this side complete information, right? Right? Now, what I'm telling this person, I'm telling this person, R5, hey, you need to export your own information, right? What happened? You, need, you need to export this this information to this guy. At the same time, when I'm when I'm exporting my information, right? I'm generating my information. At the same time, what happened? And then also export this information, right? The Cisco table. At the same time, Nokia table. Once R5 will receive it, what happened on R5, we need to. And if this guy is exporting on R9, what happened? We need to import this information. If your import export is mismatch is happening, your information will be leaked. So whatever the customer route we have, right? Whatever this customer route we have, whatever this customer route we have, whatever this customer route we have, and whatever this customer route we have, right? I need to define the special identifier for this person, right? The route target. Where should I install this route? And where should I advertise this route? I need to define the special RT value for this customer. I need to define the special RT value for this customer. For this customer, we have to have a special RT value. And for this customer, we have to define the special RT. RT and RD, both are different terms. RT is just going to make the route unique. RT is just going to tell you where should I install this information. RT is just going to tell you where should I install this information and where, where I need to advertise this information. RD is just going to tell you make the route unique. Both are different, different things, right? On a R5, IP VRF, just go, route target. You can take any number, right? You can take any number. 
but it always recommendation to use the same number that you have a RDSI so that you can easily identify. In examinations, what happened? Many times uh, they will like, uh, you know, they will try to fool you and uh, they will give the different, different numbers over there. But it always recommendation to use the same number that you have used for the RD. I see the route target. Export means what? I'm going to export the own value, one column. I can use the three column three as well as four column four as well. It's totally up to you, right? I'm going to use the same number as RD. And what happened? I need to say that route target import what? Three column three. That is this guy. So I need to install this information right in my R5 routing table, Cisco routing table. Try to understand this information 1.0.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.0.0, right? This information, I need to export it, right? In which VRF? With RT value, so yeah, RT value, one colon one. So if I'm going to export this value, so this side is also exporting, right? So this side is from 3.0.0.0.0.0.0 and 172.16.0.0.0. Right? 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 So this guy will be exported, right? In which VRF? Cisco. So if this guy is exporting, so they will export it. So what happened on R9? We need to import it. In which VRF? Which RD? One colon one. Import it, right? Same way on R9, what happened? If this guy is exporting, I need to import it in which VRF? Which value? Then, if anything mismatch is happening, your route will be leaked. Customer route will be totally leaked. No, I borrow import export. So basically, whatever you are exporting from R3 has to be imported in R1, and whatever you're exactly exporting right. from R1. Okay. I'm not exporting on R1. I'm configuring this VRF is on R5. I'm doing the configuration on R5, not R1. Our customer, the customer does not have any idea of the VRF. Okay. All this config customer MPLS customer side is not enabled, right? I'm not going to do any on a customer only. I'm going to enable the IP configuration and the protocol. That's it. Everything we are doing on the ISP side right now. So that route target that you're configuring is 1.1. One .1, uh, that is on R5. Okay. I'm going to export this value, right? Okay. Import three column three. Same thing what happened on R9. I just need to make this opposite, right? IP are, you access export, are you exporting from and importing to? Yeah. Okay. IPVR. I'm exporting which value? Three columns. Okay. What happened? Route target. Export. I'm which value I'm also exporting? Three column three, right? I'm importing which value? One column one. Just opposite, right? Same thing on IPVR of Nokia. I'm exporting which value? Take example, this R9 has a four column four, right? I'm importing which value? Two column two. Same thing on R5. You lost me. Route of which exporting I'm going to do? Which importing I'm going to do? Do show history. Step at step nine. Configure route nine. R five. R nine. I'm lost on the import export. Sorry, you lost it. I'm lost on that one. Why? That's on R9, right? Yep, that's on. So if you see this point, 
on R5, what we are doing? R5, we, R5, we are exporting, right? So R9, what happened? We are importing. Same table, Cisco. If you are exporting three column three on R9, we are importing on the R5. Same Cisco. Same thing. If you are in, uh, in Nokia, Nokia. If you are exporting to column two on R5, we need to import it in R9. If I'm exporting on a four column four on R9, same Nokia. I need to import it four column four on R9. Step number 10. Very nice. See the huge confusion. They, and guys, yeah. It has nothing to go to do. The, this route, this route, the, uh, not the scripters, the. Uh, what do you call them? Target. 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 No. No. Or D. Distinguish. Distinguisher. Not distinguisher. Yeah, distinguisher. What happened with the distinguisher? Isn't that route this? Route distinguisher is just going to make a route unique. That is going to make a 64 bit. This that is going to make a 96 bit route. BPN bigger route. But isn't that also identified with the the location of the? No, that is not going to add. That is yeah, that is going to identify the location. But this RT, I'm going to in, uh, introduce. Where should I install this information? In which routing table? So how do you export from more than one location? How do you export in the set? How do you export? You mean what? Is the, what does it mean? How do you export from one location to another locations? R5. RT value uh, can, can open, can, can we? Yeah, you can change it, I'll, you can change it. I'm just going to make a scene, okay? To just basic, uh, easy understanding. You can make it 100, colon 100. So if you're making 100, colon 100 on export side, you have to be input 100, colon 100. Um, uh, but in R5 and R9, both uh, router can use the same RT value for the same customer. Mm, uh, the mismatch will happen. Conflict will happen. Why? It is a single single uh, customer VPN VPN instance, na? Single customer. Tum kya karna chaho ki? Main aisa use karu. Three dot three. Uh, Over there also three dot three. On R5, if if you can yeah, move that right. notepad a little bit. Sorry? You only have you only have one route the distinguisher can fit this defined for R five. No, I have a two route distinguisher over there. On R five? Yeah. See. Swiping the other. Oh, one I see. Okay. okay. Same. We can use good. same RT value. We can uh, use uh, over there also. Where this one? Why we have to use the same one? So, I'm going to export the three column three. I'm going to import the three column three. Yeah, both because the RT value defined on R5 and R9 eight, same. Eight we can do that. that. We eight, can do that. Eight, eight. Let me let me think. Why does your diagram just have one, two, three, and four? Or, or one, two, Where's the one, two, three, and four? And this the, one. In the purple, yeah. I just define the RT value. I'm going to use this number and RT I'm going to use this number. I just written over there this value I'm that's using for the RT. That's what's confusing me. I'm looking at that. Okay, let me remove this guy then. It's confusing. Let's remove it. I mean that that's supposed to come on R5, right? Those route targets. Okay, are yeah. You are saying that that's supposed to become R5. We are wrong. Huh? Saying that this is supposed to become on R5 router. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was. No. No. What do you want? I don't know what these mean in relation to what you just uh, configured. Oh, well, you are, you are not able to understand why we have configured this part. Yeah. 
Okay, one minute. What, what does that have to do with the export, import export, this okay. configuration? Okay, uh, you have, okay. Can I add, so, can I add, can I add one point? Yeah, please, please. Yeah, actually, once you will uh, enable the VPN before uh, features so MPBGP will come into the picture. Over there, uh, there, that will be the identifier means like IP plus uh, RD, RT value. So that's why we need to uh, define that uh, value, RT value for exporting. I think that this is the requirement. So Devinder, what you're saying is basically if I don't configure the RD, then basically a VPN V4 will never come up? VPN V4 features came. That's why uh, they, they will export with that uh, value. MPBGP uh, means only identity uh, can, can be capable for the move the traffic. Uh, I think uh, just a minute. So uh, law, basically what I'm trying to understand is so if you don't configure the RD, then your VPN V4 neighbor will not come up? Who said this thing? Who 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 said this thing? Who? No, I mean like वो आपने VPN V4 के लिए बोला था ninety six bit. एक एक one minute one minute ninety six bit चाहिए करके one minute one minute one minute ठीक बात listen to me very carefully what I'm trying to say forget the RD forget the RT right now okay Tell me one thing. Forget the RT and RT right now. Forget everything. Step number one. Configure IP address. This thing is clear. Step number two. Configure IGP protocol. On customer end. This thing is clear. Step number three. Configure VRF. Clear. Step number four. Configure IGP on service provider. This case clear. Step number five. Configure what MPLS clear. Step number six. Uh, IBGP uh, IBGP membership. This is clear. Step number seven. Redistribution is clear. Tell this point if you have any doubts. Tell me. Forget the RD and RT. Forget that. Till this part is clear. Ron, Swami, yeah. everything is clear. Yes, clear until here, sir. No problem at all. Not tell me till this point. Will I get the membership up between R5 and? That is what I'm also trying to understand, sir. Will we get it or not? Once it comes, right? I saw you. I saw you, right? It will come, right? Basically, yeah, you're reading. Yeah, hundred percent. There's no concept. The RD and RT of the neighborship, the BGB. How can you say like this? See, I know this is a huge configuration in the MPLS VPN. That's why you guys are confusing. But there's no relation of the RD and RT for the BGP neighbor relationship. Have you ever okay. seen the BGP neighborship criteria? The RT should be defined. No, no but right? What you were talking something about 96 bit, right? Only then your VPN that, V4. Okay, that's 96. Okay, let's come to the point that 96 now. This point is let like, till this point. Here your neighborship will be up till this point. Your neighborship will be up. No. Neighborship will be up. Okay. Listen to me. When this guy will send this information to RFI, how they are sending this info? Which info? 1.0.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.0, right? This guy? This guy, right? Till this point is clear. Now, what R5 is doing? R5, they are putting this information in the which table? Cisco, and they are putting this information in the which table? Nokia. Right? Jadi, to just move Right? Now. At the same time, what happened? We have BGP table. We have forming a BGP membership between this guy, this guy. I directly want to exchange my information to this guy and Arna directly exchange my information to the this guy. No need to put the information to the R6, R7, R8. So we need to form the IBG. We have formed it, right? So this protocol is what? Voice this protocol is what? RIP. So we need to redistribute this guy, right? Into the 
this person one i'm going to read it to it listen to me if i'm going to read it to it in bgp bpn info table how this person will differentiate this out this is not a cisco listen this is not a cisco and nokia how this guy will differentiate that out sunali amon call yeah ron how this bgp vpn bgp out bgp table is going to differentiate this one because there is no vrf right on the bgp side did i configure the vrf on this particular interface look back in our order nothing if i am going to exchange this route through the bgp and if i am going to exchange this route through the bgp how they will identify this thing But we have the VRFs defined, no sir, on R5 and R9. Basically, Cisco and Nokia VRFs are there, correct? So, so this is the cust this end, right? This end. This end, right? So this end, we have a differentiation, right? We have a Cisco, but we need to put this route into the BGP table, right? We are making a B. We are making one logical connection between this guy to this guy. Correct. But even when you're redistributing it on the BGP, you're basically going into the VRF Cisco okay. and then basically Take redistributing it, right? Let's do one. Let's do one. One minute. Take a look. RT is local significant, and RT it's uh, global, so that's why RT need to define. एक मिनट बड़ा पार्टी सॉरी अबाउट दैट लॉब बट अगेन वो आप आरटी का कॉन्सेप्ट लेके आते ही आई थिंक आरडी का थोड़ा कंफ्यूजन आ गया अच्छा एक मिनट मैं इसलिए सबको रिमूव कर रहा हूं अभी दो मिनट रिमूव कर देती हूं आई स्किप दिस है निकल दो ओके जा ये खत्म हो गया मैं इसको समझ बस क्लियर कर रहा हूं पिंक कल कल पिंक है ना कल करके दिखाऊंगा तुम लोगों को एक अलग है then okay okay Sir, sir, one minute. Uh, so, can you just show me show run uh, what is there on the router? One second, just to be. VRF configuration on a VRF only a VRF is called Nokia, and this okay. two interface is called in the VRF. That's it. And, and other than that, there is some redistribution also on that. Can you just show what is there on router? Yes, in redistribution must be there. So now R one can ping R three, right? R one can ping R three because you configured the redistribution, correct? No. 
Are they too reachable? First of all, tell me one thing. This. How uh, are you send this even to Anand? Anand has right. this. Does Anand has this influence in the BGP BPN people table? First of all, we need to look up that part, right? So let's go to R3, the R9, and see. First, let's do one thing. Let's clear IP BGP BPN people. Stick. Yes, yeah, one. Yep. Same thing on R five. Don't ask me why I'm putting the point to point. If you know, that's will be good. Slash 32 at the rising right, that's fine. If I can do this, I want to slash it. So, guys, first of all, one thing do we have any RD value over there? Sorry, R5. Show IP, do show IP VRF interface. Have a VRF configured, do show IP VRF. Do we have any RD? Do store on section IP VRF. I just have a VRF configure on the particular interface that set. Swami. Yes. Problem. Can you see the difference in the output previous and after? Um, between about distinguishes here. I don't see one dot one slash thirty two there. They go right in on R three as well as. Sorry. I'll show you the difference one minute. Debo. R R1 is sending this information 10 or 0 0 0 duplicate route. And two is sending this information to the R5 duplicate route. Right? What is the AD value of OS? What is the AD value of uh, when I'm going to redistribute this route from OS into the BGP in VPN VPO table? Right? Which information I will have? This one or this one? What is Both are same lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, tell me. Same way from this side. This guy will say this once we do 16.0 so slash 16, right? If you want to go, you can go. I'm just going to do it. This one, EHRP, 980, and this side, 110. Which route I will put in the VPN? Concerns, the type concerns on the concern. What I'm saying is that which route they will install. I will lower it. Simple logic. 90. 90. 90. Lower it. That's it, right? Swami. Yes, yes. Lower ID, right? That simple reason is there. Lower ID. No, no, correct. Yeah, I understand that part. Yeah. Yeah, I understand, right? Now, but tell me if this guy will install this information, right? Uh, like uh, one one ten dot zero zero this side, right? OS website, right? What about this side route? Am I able to install? No. Right, of course, I will not install this information. Why? Because duplication is happening, right? If the same route is coming, if same route, what is the routing saying that? If same route, okay, let me reduce the size. If same route is coming from two different routing protocol, Router choose lower AD value. Right? So tell me this guy R3 can ping 10.10.10.10.10 because this route is coming from this guy, right? Whatever the R4. Can R4 ping the 10.10? .10? No. Same way, this 116.0 slash 16 coming from the 11080 and this uh, is coming 9080, right? So what happened? This is the Nokia, right? So they can save this information in the VPN repo table and they can send this in front of this guy, right? So this guy can ping to the this customer, right? What about this guy? Can they ping? No. Same route is there. Is there any identification field is happening over there that is going to make this route unique? Can I, can I make this route unique over there? No, I can't make it. I have to make this route unique. Otherwise, what happened? See, in front of you. Previously, if you see, it was the unique route. I didn't configure the slash 20, uh, like, you know, the point of bandas space slash 32 is there, but both information was there. Now, single information. So this value, right, this RD, this was making a route unique. But do we have any RD over there? The default. Now, this point is clear. Why do we need a RD? Yes, Lord. Let me complete this one. Sir, sir, one minute. Put your screenshot of the car, your peach, like where, where you're seeing only the 15.1, right? 15.1 uh -huh. on the 10. Dot subnet. Uh -huh. Can you just, can you just uh, show that once? One, on yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this one. This one is 15.1 subnet. This one. Okay, okay. And this is 25 to this one. Achha. Okay. This is the need of RD. Okay. Today we do it. Tomorrow we will Okay. So tomorrow we will continue with from the RD concept, right? And RD. Okay, meanwhile, you do one thing, watch this video again, and then you will listen. See, I'll tell you, 
MPLS VPN, this is just an overview. It has a huge configurations. I haven't implemented the BGP right now. I haven't used the same as now local AS, AS override concept, right? Then we have a dynamic BGP membership. Then you have a OS of domain ID concept, all this is happening. Lots of things in there. Okay, so just watch this video. Okay, one and two times, then you will understand the MPLS VPN. Because the, see, I'm telling you, it's not a hard one. If you just split this thing, it's not a hard. You already know the VRF, you already know the registration, you already know the VR, like IGP, MPLS, everything you know. You just need to see the commands and understand the behavior. Clear? Sir, share the notepad, sir. Aha, I'll share the notepad. Will you share it on the WhatsApp or somewhere? Yeah, I'll share it on the WhatsApp. Yeah. Sir, Kalka book bhi nahi share kare the, sir. Can you please share that as well?